Welcome to the CrossFit Max Podcast. Yo team, welcome back. We got another good one coming at you guys today. Or if it's your first time here, then we are stoked to have you and we hope you get some good value out of this. Team, we need your help. Most of our members come from referrals, from friends, colleagues, families. We need you guys to bring someone in that's going to feel the amazing effects that CrossFit Max is having on you. We have a complete onboarding process where we show them the facility, we talk about their goals, we have a full foundation program where we go over the fundamental movements of not just the weightlifting movements and stuff we do in the gym, but how you can take this and approach it to outside life as well, while also slowly increasing the intensity of their workouts. So if you have anyone in mind, please send them our website. They can book a free trial right from the website and we can get them started into this awesome journey that you guys are in. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Let's get to it. All right, you do one. Let's do this, love. All right. Let's do this. Welcome back, everyone, to your favorite podcast of the week. You got Susie and Brandon here. Hello. And we are coming up to the open. I don't think they knew that. Did you guys know this? Have we not talked? spoken about this in enough podcasts yet is the open the new australia the new australia oh i see what you i see what you did there all right all right all right yo when they listen to this podcast we're 24 hours away from the open yeah oh yeah that's right so we don't know what the open workout is yeah like 36 hours well unless you're listening to this at four o'clock in the morning on wednesday they might be (laughs) but the Open is being announced. So many cool things. Um, you guys all know what it is by now because we've spoken thoroughly about what it is. But I did want to say this. Tell them. There is a participation leaderboard on the cross on the CrossFit. No, sorry. On the games.crossfit.com leaderboard. Website. Yes. Well, website. Whatever. But it's not a www dot in it's case not anyone's a w. wondering. <laughs> yeah, it is not. So there's this participation leaderboard, which shows how many people have signed up at your gym. And we've been, oh my God, are you yawning already? Jesus. I'm so sorry. You need to bring some energy to this podcast, baby. I'm sorry. All right. So there's a participation leaderboard, which represents how many people are signed up at each affiliate in the world. And there's about. 11 or just under 11,000 affiliates worldwide. That's a lot of CrossFit gyms. We have so far, we're going to add some more here, but so far we have 46 athletes confirmed and registered under CrossFit Max. Oh my God. Which makes us ranked 886th in the world. So we're in the top we're in 886 the- gyms. <laughs> 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 wow, that's such good math. I thought you were going to say top 1,000. I was going to, but then I was like, why? <laughs> we're in the why top. Why strive for top 1,000 when we're in the top 886? <laughs> <laughs> so I know that there's some people listening to this podcast that you guys are participating in the open this weekend. Okay, wait. The person above us on the list has how yeah. many people? Yeah, well, actually, it shows. Actually, technically, we're tied for 886, which is kind of unique. But the person below us is 925th. So that means there's at least, I mean, it looks like at least 50. Let me let me click previous page Wait, there's here. 50 gyms with 46 people signed up? At least. So we would be ahead of 50 other gyms if we just got one more person. Oh, wait, I got to go previous on the leaderboard here. So we're... 880 or 800 what did i say 86 886 851 okay so there's about 40 gyms that have 46 athletes so if we were to get one more athlete we jump up up for the 30 spots then we would be 800 and like 40th crazy go sign up guys go sign up the person who's above 46 is how many 912th i think i just said no above above oh. that would be below oh sorry 851 and how many people did they have signed up for the open 47 like 
Oh, 47. Yeah. So One to more. beat them or to join them. To join them. <laughs> to join forces with all of those gyms. Yeah, there's a team from Mexico over here. CrossFit Element Earth that has wow. 47 people. They sound... Hey, they have NC Fit here. NC Fit's a pretty huge gym. This got to be part of NC Fit. This can because NC Fit's a huge gym in uh, in the states, and they only have forty seven people. This must be one of their franchises because they're a franchise gym. There's no way they only have forty seven people. They probably have hundreds of people at some of their locations. Yeah. But yeah, it's cool. You got oh, you got uh, you got an Aussie gym here, CrossFit New Market, with forty seven people signed up. Anyways, this is freaking cool. I'm excited. We got Friday night lights going down in just a couple of days from now. A few short hours. <laughs> Dave Castro has released the 24.1 hint. It's a mushroom. It's a mushroom, like the Mario. You know the Mario mushrooms? No, like Mario the kind Bros that mushrooms. You see in Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like the the Mario Bros mushroom. You know when he cl- jumps up and hits the little question mark and bloop. No. Boop, 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 boop. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then a mushroom pops up and then he gets big. Mario turns into a bigger Mario version. I literally have no idea oh what you're talking Oh my about. goodness. Well, hopefully the podcast listeners know exactly what I'm talking about. You know me. I'm not good with these types so, of references. People are thinking maybe box jump, box jumps, box jump overs, something where maybe you might have an extra life if you maybe move on to the next segment, you know? But also, it could be none of the above. Absolutely. Could definitely be like that. Because and you know what's actually I feel really like they funny? they just mess with you with these hints. Is an hour before he put out that hint, I was talking to the group about the Dave Castro hints. No way. One you hour before. It. I think it was the 9 a.m. or I think it was the noon class. And then I said, yeah, sometimes he posts these hints and they make absolutely zero sense. He could post something like grass. And then an hour later, after we finished the class, it might have been Thursday, the noon class. And uh, at one o'clock, we looked at my phone and I got a CrossFit Games notification saying Dave Castro has released the 24.1 hint. And we all clicked on it and looked at it as a group. And it was so funny because it's a bunch of grass with a big mushroom in the middle. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I predicted it. Grass could be grass. Might not be the mushroom. The mushroom might be a distraction. As to grass, you need to squat. Oh, yes. There we go. Now we're thinking outside the box. Squatting. Outside the Mario mm. box. Mushroom box. It's a me. <laughs> you are way too excited about the open. Like, I think I want the open to start so we could stop talking about how excited we are for the open to start. Anyways, hopefully we all sign up. I cannot wait. If you haven't signed up yet, just know that you're holding us back from 851st on the leaderboard <laughs> <laughs> and it is all on you. Hey, last year we were only 30 something people signed up at CrossFit Max. But that's in the past. We're talking yeah. present day. So, I'm going I'm coming for you people. Yeah, this is so I uh, can I change the year? What if I click on 2023? Oh, I got to change it to affiliate participation. Let's search up Max. Let's see where we were in 2023. Maybe maybe we did have 40 people last year. Uh, oh, no, 37. We were 37 people last year. So we have 10 more people already. Let's go. And there's still, I know there's few people that are just waiting to the last second to Why you do join. this? So, Why? Anyways, it's cool. It's an epic event. We just discussed with one of our new members, Amai. Shout out to Amai for joining our gym the last couple of weeks. And he's been killing it. And he, if he joins, which I think he might now... He will be representing India, which Hell we have a, yeah, we let's have a go. few members representing India. Do we? We have Shrey. Oh, we have yeah. Arun. We have Cam. Now we might have Amai. Damn. Yeah. So we got some Indians representing well, their country from CrossFit Max. We have you representing Australia. Australia. Do we have, I'm sure we have other people as well. Maybe Katie. From oh, England? Katie from Scotland. Scotland. Oh, my oh, no. goodness. You did not say that. I'm so sorry, Katie. Katie's losing it in her car right now. You did not say that. Awkward. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we have we have a bunch of people. Luckily, I'm in charge of editing, so I'll yeah. just remove that. <laughs> I know Max is from Ukraine, but he did put Canada as his residency when he signed up many, many years ago because he's been Canadian for a long time. Um, but, yeah. So many fun things. Anyways, banter topic. 
transitioning out of. That was fun. You Tell guys, them while we're here. Are you guys having fun? I hope you guys are having fun. Hope you guys having a great time. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this podcast. Babe, we're like six ish weeks away from being one year of podcasting. Oh. And we've dropped one episode every single week for almost a full year now. You know what I thought you were gonna say? We were six ish six six <laughs> six ish weeks away from being in single digit weeks until our baby comes yeah we will you just hit the 25 week mark 24 weeks. oh 24 I'll this be week. 25 weeks this week in the open all right gotcha when the open starts <laughs> when the open starts bring it back <laughs> i'll be 25 weeks yeah epic i mean you and melis just crushed that workout at noon yeah that was fun I love when she's in the class you because guys. It, I'm like, she's nine weeks more pregnant than me. So I'm like, I can't let her destroy me in this workout. Both you ladies are super, super pregos and you're doing wall walks instead of nose to wall. You're doing belly to wall. It's so funny. Baby nose to wall. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, fun stuff. I really, love it. Really cool things coming yes, up. Yes, I uh, managed to sneak in something about my pregnancy. And then guess what the banter topic is going to be next week? It's going to be the open when how the first open <laughs> workout went. Yay. Of course it's Stay be that. tuned. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Okay. Moving on. Talking to you guys today. We're, tell them what the topic is. No, you tell them. I'll bring up the first topic. You tell them we're talking all things training today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to? Just open my notes because uh, I wrote it. Here you go. Oh, yes. So we're, we got fun little title for you guys. Yeah, we, we did work this title a few times. Usually we just click record and go, but we figured let's take five minutes to organize our thoughts before and doing this topic. now you get to hear us ramble while we're still trying to organize our thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> but the title for today's episode or today's topic is the key to unlocking your potential as an athlete. Boom. So let's do it. We're going to go over five major points components components well so many different cinnamons (laughs) yes (laughs) so many cinnamons of of words here but essentially this topic we haven't done a training topic in a while yeah we're talking about training we're talking about our philosophies Mm -hmm. and priorities things that either our athletes at the gym are doing or or, should be doing (laughs) or could be working on i mean if they're following the crossfit max training program then they're doing it great and just to give them a little bit of a background on why we do these things and if you're not a crossfit max athlete well maybe you're doing it somewhere in the world at your gym and i think you guys can still take some good little tips out of this oh, and start to apply it toward, towards your training <laughs> so the first thing before we even talk about your workouts workouts the first thing and probably the most important aspect of training or becoming an athlete or however you want to call yourself being a fitness go-getter yeah is the most important thing is how your lifestyle is set up right now so no matter how many days you want to train at the gym no matter what your goals are in terms of hey i want to run a marathon or hey i want to run a fast 5k or hey i want to deadlift 400 pounds or hey i just want to be super fit in the gym and feel good about my performance in the gym if your lifestyle outside of the gym is struggling to to keep a healthy lifestyle then all of the things in the gym are going to be severely affected. Okay, things that encompass lifestyle primarily are nutrition, yeah, nu- sleep. Nutrition and sleep are probably the two biggest ones. I think another thing that um, we could probably loop in with lifestyle is also just mindset, like general approach mm-hmm. to life and yeah. and workouts and stuff. Yep, I love that. What do you want to talk about first in the in the lifestyle bucket? Let's call it. Let's look at this uh, as kind of, we could look at it like different ways, but we could look at it as a pyramid where at the base of our pyramid is our lifestyle. And if our foundation of the pyramid 
is broken or needs work, then everything up the pyramid is going to be be affected. Wobbly. Yep, wobbly, broken. Or because our foundation is smaller, right? If we don't have good lifestyle choices, Mm. then our pyramid can only grow so high. Okay. So the first thing is we want to talk about nutrition. Yeah. I feel like we talk about our nutrition a lot on this podcast, mm-hmm. so none of this is going to come as a shock to anybody. Yeah. So nutrition, it's important that you're first meeting your energy intake, I guess we can call that. Energy balance needs to be on point. Making sure you're eating enough yeah. to fuel your life. Yep. If you want to, if you have aesthetic goals or you want to lose a little bit of weight, then you got to meet certain caloric consumptions. If you want to just perform really well in the gym or you want to start taking on more training, then maybe you actually need to consider eating a little bit more food. Right. So calories are super important to consider. So that's number one. Number two is you want to definitely make sure you're hitting adequate amount of protein levels. Protein. Protein is king. It's really important. Things nutrition. We won't dive too much into it, but in terms of building muscle, in terms of recovery from the gym, in terms of keeping you full, so you maybe don't over consume too many calories at the end of the day. Right. Whether you're a vegetarian, a vegan, whether you have an omnivore diet, whether you're just starting to make healthier changes in your diet, paleo or keto or whatever the heck sort of diet you want to kind of follow, protein is king and you need to hit adequate amount of protein throughout the day yep next thing is eating mostly whole Whole foods foods. so foods that come from nature you want to get a lot of vegetables into your system you want to get a lot of pro uh, sorry not protein a lot of fruits you want to get foods that are you just can't help yourself (laughs) more protein protein. (laughs) side note have you ever seen that video with a guy making a shake when he's like i'm just going to add a banana in here and then i'm going to add some protein and then we're going to add some water and then we're gonna add some more protein and then we're gonna add some ice and we're gonna add some more protein and before i add this i'm gonna add some more protein and he just goes on for like two minutes about how much protein he's putting in this one shake oh my god it must have tasted like chalk <laughs> anyways <laughs> that was a side note video. but yeah you want to get veggies you want to get fruit you want to get fiber into your diet to support a healthy gut a healthy immune system antioxidants things that again these are foods that fill you up they have a lot of volume so they fill right. up your stomach they keep you full And yeah, for for other things, we also want to make sure we're hydrating Mm -hmm. really well. We want to make sure we're getting enough water intake. We want to make sure we're getting enough electrolytes. So we want to make sure we're getting good quality sodium. We want to get potassium. We want to get magnesium. We want to get calcium. Am I missing anything on the nutrition side of things? No, I think that pretty much does the very quick Cliff Notes version of balanced nutrition yeah and i would say that nutrition it can always be and probably will always be a work in progress Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that your pyramid can only be so small because your nutrition is maybe lacking some good things right now Mm -hmm. but just like your training just like you're always trying to improve your barbell technique or your gymnastic technique we're always trying to fine-tune your nutrition a little bit you know working on even the hygiene of of eating like putting your fork down in between bites and chewing your food more often and slowing down and being more mindful being more present if you're watching tv or watching a video and you're not concentrated on the food that is going in your mouth you're going to have a hard time receiving hunger cue level uh, i was call them hunger cues right you're not gonna be able to receive those hormones properly because you're gonna be distracted and just shoveling food into your mouth without being present with your food so That being said, your nutrition doesn't have to be perfect for everything else. But if we start to work on our nutrition, then our base will start to be uh, start to build and we'll be able to get a stronger foundation. Yeah. Other things like sleep. Getting enough sleep, getting good quality sleep. Yeah. Making sure you're trying to stay on some sort of fixed schedule Mm -hmm. to allow yourself to have enough and good quality sleep. Yep, trying to go to bed at the same time every night, but also trying to wake up at the same time. If you're someone that wakes up at different times of the day and you find yourself having a hard time to fall asleep at night, well, your body doesn't really have that proper circadian rhythm. It's not really sure when it should start to wind down because if you wake up at 7 a.m. one day and then you wake up at 10 a.m. the next day, well, 
your body's not going to be able to go to bed at the same time it did when it woke up at 7 a.m. versus 10 a.m. Right. Which sounds logical. Unless you're a koala you bear it, like me. When you say it out loud. But sometimes we just forget the basic stuffs. So we want to make sure we're also keeping our temperature in our bedroom cool. 18 Being to 20 nice degrees. Dark. We want it to be very dark. And yeah. Pretty easy. So nutrition and sleep, super important. If we don't work on those things, guys everything up the pyramid is going to be affected and it is the small things that matter the most and you add those things up if you don't get good sleep you're not going to recover well you're not going to be able to perform well in the gym you're not you're going to feel like you're having a harder time to breathe you're going to be grumpy yeah and it might also i don't want to say cause injuries but it might promote higher levels of inflammation in your body which might cause injuries down the line or discomfort in your joints etc etc so it's really important when you work on on the lifestyle stuff i think there was one thing what was the other thing you wanted to talk I want to talk about mindset a little bit oh yeah you want to go into that lifestyle uh, mindset is huge for yeah yeah i think that our your mental approach to not just training and health but just life in general mm -hmm. is going to help you lay the foundation of being a well-rounded athlete mm -hmm. if you say things to yourself like i get to eat healthy and i get to work out and i get to go to bed at this time and mm -hmm. stuff like that instead of i have to or i need to lose weight it's mm -hmm. i get to yeah you know take care of my body and stuff when you change the way you think about things you start to approach things with a little bit more of like a can-do attitude mm -hmm. a little bit more positivity it doesn't mean that every single day of your life has to be sunshine and rainbows mm -hmm. that's not realistic but being trying to be full of gratitude in your life trying to approach things with the mindset of how lucky am I that I get to do this instead of like I'm punishing myself with this workout mm -hmm. is going to breed much more success. You're going to want to keep up these good healthy habits because you're you're feeling really good about yourself. Hell yeah. Your thoughts become your words. Your, your words, words become, become your, your actions, actions and your actions become your habits. Boom. So make sure your habits how, make up who you are. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I'll also add to that is they're definitely if you're a little bit on the newer side of training, mm. if you don't if you don't make the mental commitment of making this a lifestyle training should be part of your lifestyle. Working out is a part of your lifestyle. It's not an addition to your lifestyle. It's not, like you said, I don't have to go or I need to go and train. It's like you kind of have to like you should be doing this it's part of your life is focusing on your health yeah and if you frame your thoughts around it as like this i uh, this is who i am i'm yeah. someone who cares about my health mm -hmm. and therefore i go to train at the gym five times a week it's going to be much it's going to be met with a lot less resistance of like oh my god i have to find time for this stupid workout that i don't want to do you yep. know hell yeah so that's the foundation. Lifestyle is the foundation. Now, I know we haven't gone into any sort of training yet, but it just it is so important to understand that that is the foundation yeah. of the pyramid. Now, let's call it first part of actual training now. Okay, so talking about the the actual workouts. Yep. We're diving into the second layer of the pyramid, which in terms of like the actual training is kind of the base of the pyramid, I would say. But in terms of we're talking about full lifestyle of an athlete here, um, aerobic capacity is the huge thing. So your body's ability to just keep moving at a sustainable at a pace. Sustainable pace mm -hmm. This will help promote um, movement in your body. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily have to be full on hardcore, you know, 2159 thrusters and pull ups as fast as you no. can. This does include your body's ability to go faster, but your aerobic base is just simply your body's ability to just keep moving. Go for a walk. Go for a light jog. Get on the your rowing machine. Your cardiovascular health, your, your cardiovascular lungs, health. capacity, things like that. Exactly. So your body's just ability to start to bring up your heart rate, but your physical capability of continuing to move. And if that is 
on the weaker side of things, then everything else again it's become up the, extremely challenging. Up the pyramid is going to be extremely challenging. So in terms of that, will help you move a little bit better, a little bit more. That will also help with recovery. That'll right. also really really help with all the health metrics that you just talked about: healthy heart, you know, healthy joints, healthy brain, healthy lungs. Right. So aerobic capacity is really really important, and this is why we typically have med cons at the end of all of our sessions yes some are shorter some are longer we have one session in the week that is called cardio ain hardio and it's a purely just cardio piece that is meant to be lower intensity typically 30 to 40 sometimes 45 minute range mark mm. where we're just moving at a nice gentle steady pace some athletes like to use this as an active recovery through the week some people like to use this as one of their main aerobic trainings for the week right having an aerobic base is something that it it brings you so much better quality of life inside and outside the gym mm -hmm. if you're somebody who has generally good cardio good aerobic um, capacity and you've ever had like a really bad pneumonia or something where mm -hmm. you're you're you come down with something and, and you're not able to use what you're used to experiencing and you mm -hmm. live for like a week or two in that sort of like illness and you realize how much you heavily rely on just your aerobic capacity in everything that you do in your life. Yeah. I think that like sometimes if you're used to being fit, you take that for granted. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. It's also another thing that the better your aerobic capacity is, the better your immune system is going to yeah. be as well. Right. And your ability to bounce back from things like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that is number two. That is the second stage, the second level. The second key to unlocking your potential as an athlete. So yep. we got to unlock the lifestyle. Yep. And we got to unlock the aerobic capacity. Yep. Next on the pyramid, third tier. Point number three is weightlifting, which we do a lot of here. Lift heavy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Resistance training. Mm -hmm. But just to dive a little bit deeper into that, doing like compound exercises, exercises that we see a lot in CrossFit that are more full body. Mm. I love me some bodybuilding stuff where we're isolating bicep curls and getting a good pump in our biceps or hamstring curls right. or even like the quad, the leg extensions. We did some of this in Australia at that gym. Oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> but for sure, a lot of the movements we do, we're really using our full body, doing a barbell back squat doing a barbell deadlift using m almost our entire body to lift something even exercises like a shoulder press that is using not just your shoulders but it's using you know the front and the back part of your shoulder it's using your core to stabilize the bar overhead it's using your triceps it's actually using your pecs a little bit as well so there's a lot of full body things that are happening when we are weight training we also, this allows us to be, this allows us to also have a stronger metabolism. This mm. allows us also to have stronger bones, which I don't feel like we talk about this enough, but stronger like bone density, stronger muscle tissue, Especially stronger joints. Especially for our athletes who are, well, we're all aging actually. Yeah. I think <laughs> I'm like much, everybody's aging. Soon, Everyone's getting older. <laughs> yeah. As soon as we start, as soon as we hit the age of 25 to 30 years old, it's after, downhill from there. after the, yeah, essentially after that, our bones essentially get weaker, our muscles get weaker. And if we don't Not use across it, Max, they don't, yeah, if you don't use them, then essentially you are going to lose them. So weightlifting and using full body exercises is crucial for not just not just performance inside the gym, but also longevity, longevity for your health, etc. So this is why we do a lot of, you know, cleans, snatches, deadlifts, back squats, shoulder press, push press, push jerks. We do a lot of full body gymnastics stuff when people see us swinging on the bar here and they think that we're out of control. It's actually meant to be super in control. Right. It's meant to teach you how to properly engage your lats mm -hmm. how to properly pull with your biceps but also understanding 
understanding the positioning of the hollow and arch position where we have to use our core, our hip flexors, our quads. We have to then go into the arch position where we're using all things on the back of our body, our right. glutes, our hamstrings, and understanding how to go in and out of those movements. So it's a huge part of like coordination and balance and using a lot of your body which is going to give you, in my opinion, the most value for the time that you probably have to give in, let's say, your training for the week. Right. We don't because all have... we don't have all 25 hours to donate to our training every Exactly. Week. We're not mm-hmm. all, let's say, full-time athletes. We're not professional athletes here. But we do want to create a sick athlete. Yeah. An athlete that looks, feels good, mentally is feeling sharp and focused and is feeling productive at work or in life or in control of their emotions and everything. So weightlifting plays a huge part in being able to do that. And we have limited time. So you're going to get way more bank for your buck out of the deadlift component versus, hey, let me go do some like hamstring curls over here. On a specific machine. Exactly. Gotcha. And I think that you just tapped into part of that lifestyle component that we're trying to work on that mindset Mm -hmm. is weightlifting builds your confidence and when we are more confident then we generally see things with a little bit more of a glass half full Mm -hmm. and so this starts to really play play a role in our our mental health just as much as our physical health for sure yeah i think we've had a lot of people and those are the people that really like touch our heart and I'm going to cry because I'm super emotional pregnant <laughs> woman but at, whenever somebody reach out to us and tells us like oh I handle my work stress better because of the gym that's mm. super cool yeah so that is point number three yes. getting in some weightlifting this is cr- this is a standard pillar in the CrossFit Max program we have weightlifting almost every single day aside from the cardio in hardio essentially right let's move on to point number four yeah point number four is going to be we'll categorize this as range of motion so we touched on this previously in the last point but getting our joints through their full range of motion Mm -hmm. let's use the pull-up for example yes if you're the old school bodybuilding pull-up where we're getting up there and we're doing like half reps you Very know trying to get reps. trying to get in like 20 <laughs> half reps in there what are other exercises that we can squats squats yeah half reps the squats going uh, three quarter uh, only one quarter of the way down instead of below Lo- parallel loading up loading up the barbell let me put as many 45s as i can on each side and just like squatting halfway down and yeah count it but what is that going to do that's going to cause stiffness is going to cause poor movement mechanics you're going it's to going build to cause really strong quads and nothing else <laughs> it's going to cause instability in your joints so when we're talking about full range of motion we're talking specifically getting into deeper parts of our squats allowing our hips to get into flexion and extension our knee as well our ankles to get through their proper ranges that they were meant to get through exactly pressing a barbell all the way overhead and fully extending at the shoulders at the elbow locking it out overhead bringing it all the way down until we press it back up Mm -hmm. range of motion is key i would also say for the athletic side of things because if you don't do that proper range of motion you are going to build like i said that stiffness the instabilities we might start to see some flaws in your movement that also might start to cause a little bit of discomfort hey coach every time i'm doing this my lower back is flaring up yeah i wonder why because your quads are severely tight and your posterior meaning your hamstrings glutes are super weak so yeah your back is pretty tight when you're it's just yeah exactly your your back is trying to do all of the work because you don't have any strength in your hamstrings and your glutes because you weren't squatting or you weren't doing those movements where you're getting all the way through their proper ranges yeah you've built stiffness in your hips so you know your your muscles around your hips are pulling on your back as well all that to be said when we train those ranges of motion when we get into lower parts of squat and we understand that not everybody is coming from the same point in their fitness life yep some people have been training 
that way for many years and have to start building it slowly where they might not get into a full depth squat. Right. When I started CrossFit, I was um, 20 basketball player, volleyball player doing a lot of jumping, Mm. didn't really train any sort of legs. Coach asked me to squat. I fell on my ass. So I had to work on that range of motion, stiff ankles, stiff hips. Right. Even now to this day, you know, my feet pronate inward. So I really have to work on stopping my ankles from doing that, pushing my knees out, not letting my knees cave in, keeping my core nice and tight and braced to get into that low squat position. Yeah. So, I think that's something that we really prioritize at CrossFit Max mm-hmm. is range of motion. It's much more beneficial to have less weight on your back squat barbell mm-hmm. and get into that full range of motion than to let your ego come into play and not be breaking parallel on your squat, but maybe potentially be lifting heavier. Yeah. And I think it's a little bit difficult for us sometimes the, the world of Instagram. You know, you get these videos of people's like squatting on Instagram and you just want to scream at them through the the phone because they're not even it doesn't even count as a squat. You're doing half a rep and you're just setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. And then like a month later we see them they're doing injured. physiotherapy yeah. sessions. And we're thinking, damn, if only they had worked on that proper squat form. Only they were CrossFit Max member instead. <laughs> if only they weren't doing one RMs every other week. Two weeks. You know? That is a big red flag. If you were testing your one rep max every week, this is problematic. Well, let's get into point five because point five is all about this. <laughs> yes, I'm too excited. So that was range of motion. That was the fourth. So our pyramid starting to get towards the top here. The fifth one is what we call progressive overload. So Tell maybe that maybe you've heard of this, maybe you haven't, mm-hmm. but having, let's use the squat, for example. If we're trying to get stronger in the squat, uh-huh. there needs to be some sort of progression that happens over many weeks, not a week or not two weeks, but many weeks that you need to get yourself under the barbell. Right. You need to either slowly increase the weight week to week Or you need to increase the repetitions or you need to increase, let's say, the tempo, the the eccentric part of the lift. Or maybe, like I said before, you can't quite get into a deep squat, but you want to start increasing the range of motion of the squat. So there needs to be some sort of progressive overload as an athlete. And I think this is kind of the one of the most important things, but it really is the, the cherry on top for creating the best structured program for our athletes people's potential exactly so you could use you know we at crossfit max we do 12 week training blocks for that reason i write out five things that i want the groups to be working on and then it leads us in that direction for the 12 weeks that doesn't mean that every single monday you have to back squat that's not how we do it here because some athletes come Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then on the weekend, other athletes come Tuesday, Thursday, then on the weekend, everyone has different come schedules. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And not on the weekend, right? <laughs> so we try to, we have some sort of progressive overload that goes from week one all the way to week 10 or 11, depending on how we train it. And then there's a couple tests at the very end of the training block. After and this- you've had lots of exposure, lots of different types of training that have mm-hmm. allowed you to actually improve. Exactly. Yeah, there's typically at the beginning, there's a lot of slower technique work that happens, really just emphasizing okay, we're working on the push jerk in this 12-week cycle. So we're going to work on fully extending at the hips, making sure we're getting the most out of that hip drive, making sure we are getting good footwork when we're catching and we're not feeling unstable at our feet because if we're unstable at our feet, everything up the chain towards the top of your head and that barbell overhead is going to be wonky. Right. Whereas if your feet are stable in a good position, you've, you've used full hip extension to really drive that barbell up, then we can start to work on how you're properly catching the bar and all that stuff. So there's technical work that we do towards the beginning of the program. And then we start to increase either the volume or the weight on the bar. And then it leads you to this end result. This after many, many weeks of progressive overload, it allows you to, Hey, let's just test this out. Now, after three months of training, 
let's go and give this a test. Yes. It doesn't just have to be weightlifting. This is also for your aerobic capacity as well. For example, if you want to do a 5K run, your goal is to just run 5K straight. Well, that would be so ridiculous if I just said, hey, you, you want to run a 5K? All right, go out there and run. You're going to look at me and say, well, I, I've never done a 5K. How am I just going to go and run a 5K right now? Yeah. Well, what you need to do is you need to have maybe timed intervals where you run a minute, walk a minute, run a minute, walk a minute, and you do that for 30 minutes straight. And then yes. every week, maybe the following week, you do a minute 15 of running followed by a minute of rest. And then eventually, maybe you do two minutes of running, but instead of a minute of rest, you do 45 seconds of rest. So you start to decrease the resting period. Right. And this allows you to adapt to the movement. Mm -hmm. You can't expect your body to, you know, people will be like, oh, like running hurts my knees. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to hurt anyone who never ran before his knees. If you just go out and run for five kilometers straight, mm -hmm. it's going to be extremely uncomfortable. But if you build up the stamina and you build up the sort of movement in your in your system by progressively overloading starting off really small starting off at a, an amount that almost feels too little mm -hmm. and increasing over time then you're allowing your joints to adapt to the movement and yep. then you don't get injured yeah create a good movement pattern working full ranges of motion etc and uh, on a different similar to progressive overload but maybe talking to more the beginner athletes right progressive overload could even just be you simply going to the gym from two to three times yes. if you go from two to five times in one week that's a huge huge difference and that might be a big shock onto on your, your body system, here yeah so you might want to okay on my first month of training i'm going to train three times per week okay on my second, I'm going to see if maybe I can do three times for the first two weeks. But on the last two weeks, I'm going to go four times. And then the next month, I'm going to try to do it four times every single week yep. rather than just jumping from either no training or maybe once or twice per week straight to four or five times per week. That might, yeah. be, that might be a lot. A little bit of a shock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is number five. I'll, I'm going to add a bonus one here because I think this is really, really important. And that is going to be intensity. Intensity is going to to be really important if you are trying to reach any sort of goal. Right. So if you do want to lift a 400-pound deadlift, well, you need to slowly, as you work on your lifestyle, as you work on your aerobic capacity to recover and to be able to move, as you're practicing the deadlift and you're working on full ranges of motion, as you are progressively overloading every week, you need to eventually start to add some intensity to get the results you're looking for. That could be for deadlift, that could be for a 5K, you're gonna have to get uncomfortable, uncomfortable. at yeah. some point. You're going to have to push limits and push boundaries, and that is totally normal. But I, I think we see this thing called intensity and we think that we need it instantly but i think intensity is is really 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 like the end thing that we need we need to work on all of the previous five things we've noted you need to be moving well before you add intensity yep or else you are likely to injure yourself yep and once you're kind of working on all the other things you'll start to feel like you want to give intensity yes you're gonna feel like you want it and you might even start to crave it a little bit and like then, a little itch. and then, yeah, and then it kind of becomes all these things coming together where now your pyramid starts to get bigger, your foundation starts to get bigger, starts to get wider. And then you're thinking, okay, like now I can actually add a decent amount of intensity. And the objective is to be able to add intensity at least a couple times per week. I mean, I'm adding intensity maybe in my sessions, minimum three times. I would probably say four right. sessions out of my week tend to be on the intense side of things right and, the, and intensity doesn't mean you always have to be lifting your heaviest yes exactly but intensity can be like one day i'm trying to get better at my back squat so i'm going to really push hard on my back squat for this day but hey you know what on this conditioning piece two days later i want to be pushing in that conditioning piece because i feel like my aerobic capacity is pretty darn good but i want to feel some intensity so in that medcon i'm going to go 
to my limits and I'm going to push hard, you know? So intensity doesn't always have to be just for weightlifting. It could be for conditioning pieces. Even if you want to test your aerobic capacity as well, if you want to go for that 5k, you want to go for the 10k, you have a half marathon that you've been training for. Well, Hey, it's, it's race day. Let's add some intensity. Let's go. Yeah, I think that it's really important to know that you're not going to get stronger or fitter or faster if you don't get out of your comfort zone and push yourself. Mm -hmm. It's just really important to do that level of intensity with a solid foundation of movement. Boom. There's no point in trying to bust out as many bro pull-ups as possible and being like, oh, I, my, I did a new PR on my number of pull-ups when you weren't getting the full range of motion. Mm -hmm. And now you have wrecked biceps for the whole week. Yep. Yep. Good points. So we hope this helps you guys understand a little bit about how you can really unlock your potential. Maybe you, you were kind of going through this pyramid with us and thinking to yourself, Hmm, I'm kind of lacking this level. I'm really good at weightlifting, but man, do I struggle in the cardio stuff. Mm -hmm. Or also like vice versa. Uh, vice versa. Maybe I'm really good at really good at the the cardio stuff and the weightlifting stuff, but man, like some days I'm just super tired. Mentally I need to work on being a little bit my approach to the approach to the, yeah, workout. approach to the workouts. I need to be a little bit more consistent. Maybe I could tweak some things that are going to mm -hmm. help my recovery. Or maybe you're just training three to four times per week. And every single time you finish training, you feel wrecked. Like your body is not recovering properly. Well, I would highly go back to lifestyle and see, am I eating, eating enough. enough? Am I eating the right foods? Am I sleeping enough? Do I have the good mental approach? And all that stuff. All right. Let's do... Our favorite segment of the show. Pew, 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 client pew, pew. of the week. <laughs> and this is going to be a client that has already been a client of the week a while ago. A double client of the week. And this is someone who has been encomp encompassing all six, I would say. Of I think these. she has taken this keys to... What did we call it? Unlocking the <laughs> athlete's potential. Unlocking the athlete's potential to heart. She yeah. has been a CrossFit Max member since pretty much day one. Yeah. And she's been killing it this new year. Absolutely crushing it. Her lifestyle is on point. Also, her mental approach. Her mental approach on point. Her cardiovascular aerobic capacity on point. Oh, yeah. Weightlifting, improving every single day. Range, range of, of motion, motion a thousand percent killing it she's really 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 wall balls were the lowest squats i've seen her do taking this seriously so we know it's a woman um what else were we saying what was the other thing uh oh well progressive overload progressive she's overload i mean that. she's a crossfit max member so we've taken care of that part for <laughs> yeah. you and the intensity, intensity has definitely it. been there and just her general mood and stuff and the joy of having her around is amazing who is it tell them who it is it's lucy, lucy. Ooh, so shout lucy. out lucy your incredible dedication to your health and fitness has not gone unnoticed with us you've been killing it girl absolutely crushing it can keep up the good work you are the example of the ideal CrossFit Max athlete. Oh, yeah. Amazing. All okay. right, guys. We, we hope you. you got some good value out of this podcast. If you don't mind leaving us a rating and a review on whatever platform you are on, it would be greatly appreciated. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya. Bye. <laughs>